When going out and sampling, it is very important for soil vapor to be monitoring any leak that may be potentially within your system. When using our shroud setup, you get real-time monitoring of those leaks using helium and detectors. Before taking the setup into the field, you're going to want to practice setting it up, basic operation, and breaking it down. Often, with short notice, Tedlar bags are used. But for most situations, a SUMA canister is appropriate. You will also always need a flow controller and a vacuum gauge that measures the vacuum of your canister on the system. And when using the helium shroud, all of this comes pre-installed. Most of the connections on the system are micro quick connect, which are reliable and easy to use. You need to be very careful, however, of getting any sand or grit. You can see that by simply pulling back on the receiving end, I'm able to install and remove with relatively little force. And of course, you will need a chain of custody. One of the best aspects of this setup is that you get real-time monitoring through helium detectors while taking your purge of your well. The first step in doing this is to connect your well line, represented here, to the internal body of your shroud. This is the only swage connection you'll be making, so you want to make sure that you do it well. We're going to put our nut and ferrule that is provided on the end of our well line with about a centimeter of line above it. We're then going to affix that to our flow controller within the shroud. Once we do this, you really only need to make it about hand tight, and then when in the field, go ahead and use a wrench and give it just a quarter turn. Lastly, We'll connect our canister and insert our helium detector. We will then close our shroud environment. You will hear an audible click. You will switch your three-way manifold to the off position. And then while in the off position, we will charge our shroud with helium. The DTSC guidance states 20 to 40% internal concentration. We set our regulators for that to take about 10 seconds of injection time. So while I'm doing that, I will begin to assemble my purge. There's two purge lines. One goes directly on the in port of the flow through detector. The other, which has our purge regulator on it, goes on the out port. And it's critical that this gets connected last because as soon as this regulator is connected to your purge can, it will begin to pull vacuum on the system. You want to make sure that it's pulling on a closed system. At this point, my internal helium is at 20%. Before even turning to purge, there are two things to check. One is, is my purge regulator dropping at all? If it is while in the off position, that is indication that these connections are poor and that the ends of the lines may be frayed. In those cases, just slice off the end of the line and reassert. If you start to see helium on that detector, while in the off position, it is possible that the connection of the, of the purge port to your shroud may be loose. Once we switch to purge, we immediately want to start to look at our detector. If our detector climbs to helium concentrations equal to what is in our shroud, which right now is exactly 20%, that would be clear indication that our connection of our well line to our shroud was done incorrectly. 
Right now, it's holding strong at 0%. So the only other thing I'm going to look for is after what would be your calculated purge time, it is possible that when purging in one or two well volumes, you may create enough vacuum below your shroud at the base of your well that if the well seal at the top is improper, helium will get sucked down to the sample point and back up through the system. So again, keep an eye on your detector once you reach one or two purge volumes, as well as the very beginning of your purge process. At this point, we're still at zero, demonstrating that I was able to get a strong connection. Lastly, once we have purged our full volume and we have proven that all of our connections are sound to any leak, you will switch the three-way manifold over to sample. And at that point, you will sample for the given amount of time. Typically, the regulator is set to 150 mils per minute to 200. Your can is 1.4 liters. So your sample time should take between 7 and 10 minutes.